Hello everybody, today we're going to trim the wild fox terrier. Uh, we're gonna, his name is Lionheart. I'm not going to do it, but Gini is going to trim him. We're going to do a full trim and we're going to work in stages. So we're going to work in stages. Every time we, uh, you, you would prepare the dog or you would trim the dog, you're gonna, we're going to trim him again. So at the end, you will have like a dog in fully show trim. This is how you get them in the grooming shop with a long coat, so it's gonna be a full trim. Hello, I'm Dini. I'm gonna trim uh, Fracke. He's my son's uh, dog. He's uh, eight years old. Uh, he used to be uh, go to the show, but he's retired now and uh, he uh, <laughs> lives in my house. <laughs> he's got a coat from about six months old. He's got a dead coat. You can see this piece, you can see it's been dead, so it's ready to come out. Uh, it's like a tree with the leaves falling off the tree. I start with this dog brushing with the slicker brush his legs. Now I've finished brushing and I'm going to trim the do dog. Uh, I use the Sentinel trimming knives. So now I've brushed the dog, I'm going to start trimming the dog. I use the Sentinel trimming knife because they're very light, they hardly weigh anything and it makes you makes it easier to trim instead of a heavy knife. I use a thin handle knife because I like it thin. Um, there is also a thick handle knife but I use the thin because I've got smaller hands than a, a man. I think. I start uh, with his jacket, that is his body, top of his tail, start from here and I take that off first. So if you hold and I start at this point, I usually start here at this point. You have to hold the skin a little bit tight so you can easily pull it out. I use chalk because it just makes, makes it more easier to get the coat out. I use quite a lot of chalk because I think it makes life easier. So I'll start here and I use uh, tr the Sentinel trimming knife number four. It's a coarse knife. You, need, you can use it for the long coat. See, and it comes quite easy, easy. It comes quite easy out. You don't have to force anything. You don't take big pieces, small pieces. And I trim him on, um, on his uh, undercoat. Because if you have um, this in, the, in your shop, people don't like it on, the, on to his skin because they see his skin and they don't like it. You hold your trimming knife, this, and you hold it straight and you leave your hand like this. Don't twist it or anything, otherwise you get trouble, trouble with your elbow and all sorts and that you don't want to do it. Especially if you do it for a living, you have to hold your trimming knife correct. You have to hold the skin a little bit, otherwise you do this and I don't like it. If I start, I go in a, a from here to there, I don't go here, I don't go there and there, I just go one. With this piece to trim, I go with my hand through here <laughs> and I hold the skin like this. Yeah, and I follow his ribs.
See, now it's still a little bit here. Then I hold him like that, he leans a bit on my arm, but uh, that's okay for him. When I trim this off now, I'm going to start on the other side, but I leave this bit till last because I think it's easier to hold than I've got more grip on him to hold for to trim on this. So now I've done that, this side, and I'm going to start on this side. This is my um, more difficult side because I'm right-handed and the other side is closer to my hand. So this, I have to turn that. A bit of chalk, it makes it much easier to trim the dog. I use quite a lot of chalk in my, uh, when I trim dogs. I think it makes his life easier. I use the same trimming knife again. It's um, the W4. It's a coarse knife. It's very light. It's easy trim. It's got a nice glowing coat, so it's not difficult to trim. You hold the skin. You hold the skin a little bit. So it makes it easy for him and for me. I've got this and I can hold them on this, so it's very easier for me. I sometimes hold the grip like this, otherwise I can't get the shape of this uh, rib cage. I trim it here, it's a jacket, it's like if you know Welsh Terrier or Nero, I trim that jacket off. So this elbow here. You can see it's dead. It's got no color in it, especially with the black, you can see. It's ready to come out. A white boxer has got an upper coat. That's the color. A wiry coat. And the undercoat, and that's soft and a bit grey. It's got a bit of a greasy coat, because it's like a, a water repellent. That's why it's a bit greasy. It's not like a Maltese or anything, they've got a different sort. sort. Different kind of coat. I think a wire fox terrier should be trimmed, because it's called wire-haired fox terrier. Uh, the Welsh Terrier as well, but it's called cool, and it should have a wire coated dog. It's a wire coated dog and it should be trimmed. In uh, if you do it in correct correct way, it's got it's not painful for the dog. It's just ready to come out. You can see it's ready to come out. If you don't uh, trim these dogs like this, you uh, they be clipped. They sometimes get irritation because the the hair don't come through anymore. It needs to come out. You can see it. If they uh, clip the dog, it is, um, they match more and the people at home can't brush. But I don't brush these dogs very often. Uh, just with a slicker brush and a comb, that's all I do with it. And uh, it's not difficult because it's not hair that mats. It's like, because it's wire coated. Now I take the little bit, the, the ridge in the middle, I take it off now. Why Fox Terrier is my favorite breed. I've, been, I've got them all my life, so... Um, and, um, but I like other terriers as well. Now I've done his jacket, you can see. Okay. And I usually start with this uh, thigh. I can do this from the first side. My easier side is this because I'm right-handed. But when you trim dogs, you have to be very conscious how you hold your things, your knife, your comb, your how high, the height of your trimming table. If you're gonna sit down, you have to lower it. Otherwise, you get trouble with your back or your shoulder or your elbow or your hands. So if you want to sit down, I lower the table a bit to do this. I'm going to trim this five. I take this bit off first, this, and then later on I'm going to blend it in. 
I will start with doing the rough parts first and then uh, the finer parts as last. Pull the hair in the direction the hair is growing. They will go this way or that way, but I always pull it in the direction it is growing. I like a block of chalk instead of the powder because it's easier to get in, otherwise the powder is everywhere. Then again, I do this little bit first here, and then uh, later on I'll finish. If you want to show your dog and you haven't got the time for the whole dog and you want to trim out the full coat, it's the importance you do this first and then you can do the rest later on if you want to. Because this is the main importance for a show dog, his jacket is the main important to get in condition. This has to be shorter later on anyway, so you can leave this for a bit, but make sure you've got time to do the whole thing, but not just parts. Of it. You can leave this for them if you want to show your dog this. But if you're in a grooming salon, I would do the whole dog, not leave it, I would just do the whole dog. And you can't send the dog home half, half treat. I'll take off his front. I use, again, I use chalk. I hold it tightly. I mainly use on this dog the W4 because it's a long coat everywhere except on the head. I use another different trimming knife because you have to be closer to the skin and you don't want to damage it because this is coarse, a coarse teeth uh, trimming knife and the other are finer teeth. But if you're going to trim the dog for show, you need different trimming knives. You probably don't need the coarse one again because you want to keep the dog coat in condition and you, uh, you ain't got a long coat anymore. I trimmed the, the his front here, to, if you hold his elbow here, I trimmed it to here and leave the legs, leg hair for later on. So I do the hard work first and later on I do the finer work. You get in the shop and the people asking when he's ready to be trimmed. And you have to say when he's losing hair, they're usually ready to be trimmed. Here the hair growing in, in a round circle and you just go with the circle. You don't go pull against, you just go around with the circle. Always go in the direction the hair is growing. Now you can't see the circles much, but you can see here a little bit. Okay, now I've done this side, the rough bit, now the other side. Again, I use some chalk and hold my trimming like that, like this, and you can see you don't cut it, you just take the dead higher up off. And then I take the front part off till here. And later on, I finish, finish it, but I just do the, uh, the heavy, heavy work first. I like them to come in my trimming shop like this because it's easy to, easy to trim because the hair is so dead it's ready to come out and it's not, don't make hard work. I always keep the skin tight because it's more easier for me but it's com more comfortable for the dog as well so I don't pull all the skin so it's just stays tight for me it's more comfortable for, for the dog. Sometimes you have to adjust your chair or your table to keep on the right height for your trimming work. It's very important. Uh, a white fox terrier shouldn't have a uh, chest, so this has to be straight. You don't see any hair sticking out here. I think there is a difference between the black hair and the white hair. It's easy to trim the black hair and the white hair, I think. I hold this tail like this and I stretch it up again to make it more comfortable for him and for me. So 
So now I've done all the hard bits. Now I'll take another trimming knife just to tie it a bit up. You can see it's still a bit longer here. I take the W2 and I tie this a little bit up. You can see it's still uh, sticking out here. Uh, the W2 you can also use as a carving knife. You hold the, the knife tight, not tight, towards the, to, to the skin and go slowly like this. Don't go mad. Don't, otherwise you don't want to hurt the, the skin, you just want to slightly go over it and, and go like this. And you can see already the wool a uh, little bit coming out. You don't get all the wool out now because it's in his, uh, in his undercoat. The dog is in his undercoat now. But already you get it out. You have to do this quite a lot if you want to show the dogs. Uh, show dogs. Because the, the undercoat pushes the upper coat up. You can see the shape is coming already. I still got this, still this undercoat, but it's already smoother and it's already. Um, I've parted it out a lot already. See? Now I'll start with the legs. I use a terrier part for that and a comb. I brush it up like this and I use a lot of chalk in it. I think the chalk makes it easier to get the shape. The shape. So I brush it first, comb it and brush it up. Comb it from like this way. You can already see where it has to come off and where we have to leave it. So now I put chalk in it. I think it's easier to get the shape and make a shape. Make chalk in it. Okay. I use the tap part, brush it up like this. For the legs, I use another trimming knife, uh, a W3, that is specially made for legs. Lower my seat a bit. <laughs> so, and you can start by this, blending it in. This has to stay because it makes the dog shorter. So if you take this up, it makes the dog longer. So this has to stay. But you have to blend it in from short to longer. So you have to do this quite slowly, not too fast and slow. You take it up by the end of the hair and you take little, little, little bits. Because if you take too much off, you can't put it back on. In the red sheet, it's coming from short to longer, but still here, it's too much. When you, when you show a dog, you have to keep pulling the hair little bit by little bit to refresh it. Because uh, otherwise you don't get a good texture of the leg hair. And you want to keep it a wiry coated leg hair. When you comb it, you can see. It's going to be short, so longer. A white fox terrier should have straight legs, so if you put a comb here, there's one straight line and one straight line here. Don't skin this out, because otherwise you get bow legged or o legged. Bow legged, o legged. So you have to be very careful with this ha hair. You use a bit of chalk, we comb it. You take little by little, you take it with, I do always do it with my hand this. I need to trim the, the feet, the little bits here, so they keep getting new hair. You can see he's got a bit uh, stained, stained feet, it's because he's been uh, outside and in the wet. And you have to keep washing it and try to keep it out. And don't scissor it, otherwise you never get it out. So you can already see the shape. If this were a pet top in, in your grooming salon, this would be fine. But if you go for a show, you have to renew the coat constantly. You can see it next, every time, next step and next step, you can see it's coming better and better. Okay, now we'll start with the other leg. You can see, this is short and this is longer. Now you have to blend it in from, from short to longer. Because this has to stay here. Because if you leave this longer, you make the top look shorter. 
So if you take this off, you make the top look longer. Okay. Use a bit of chalk. And slowly I take little bits out. already the change from short to longer. They have to have straight legs so if you make a line from here to the ground and here to the end to the table, top of the table. Okay, so if you put, comb this up and you take slowly little bits out, use a bit of chalk or your pin pad. Take the little bits of hair out, it gets a new coat and it gets better and better. And you get the shape better and better and better and better. I even trim a little bit around the feet. So I don't. And you get a nice fit. They want to have this shape. Already starting to get there. And if there's a lot of spray, but the uh, more you trim on it, how better it's going to be. So, in the side one, always like this. And that will just be okay for now. Just a little bit here. Don't let you just brush up again with your pin pad, pad. Like this. I put a bit of, I put a bit of chalk in. The white box is has to cut a straight leg here, straight leg here, straight here and straight here. A tube where you put a poster in it, you know, your poster in it. And it has to be round, but it has to be one line from here to there. So you brush it off with your pin pad or your comb, like this. Put it, have put a bit of chalk in so you can have a bit of grip. And you start, start on the top. I use for this little bit a finer trimming knife and I use the other one, this one number three for the, to do the legs. But I do, do it with my hands. Yeah. Just this bit, this here a little bit, I just trim in. Blending with the with the leg, so like like a, like a little bit of a triangle. You keep brushing it and holding it, and you see more and more. You can already see from here to there. It's coming slowly. You get in the shape. This bit you comb this way backwards because this has to stay longer, a bit longer, so you make the optical, you make the dog a bit shorter. So if you take this off like this, it makes them longer. See, like this, like this, like this, and like this. It's like a round thing, but how more you trim on it, how better it's going to be. It's coming from a long coat, so you can't expect. It can be in good shape in one go. Same to do with the other leg. You have to blend this in from here to here. Every time I brush it up with my pin pack or my comb, it doesn't matter with which one, it just you can see it's sticking out and it needs to be take it, taken off. I think for the leg hair, the W3 is a very good one because I sometimes use my fingers for the legs and the 
Because I think it's sometimes better. I don't want to take off the lot. You can see it's already coming. The shape is already coming slowly. Okay, that will do for now, I think. Now we have to start the head. And his ears. Now his head. Is, a fox terrier is supposed to have a long lean head. The longer the better. I first start by uh, trimming off this. I leave a, a thumb behind his eye so I can't go wrong. So I take everything off from here. So I can't go wrong. So I start with the top of his head. I don't use a, a, such a coarse knife. I use the W2 and some if it was and I start putting a bit of chalk on. I start here and trim it off. In the uh, direction the hair is growing, like you do everywhere, really. I always leave the head uh, at last. It's the most difficult part of the whole white fox terrier. But the more you trim his face, how better it's going to be. The same is the legs, the more you trim it, the more you get it into shape and the more you get it into in condition. I you have to put the tail a bit higher, higher because of your uh, shoulders. It makes it better for, for your shoulders if you trim the right height. So if everything before about the thumb from his eye, I leave everything on. I leave that on. Because you can always take off, but you can't put it back on. Now, you see? Mm -hmm. On the side. And there's a bit of chalk. The more you trim it, you can see it in the next, uh, next stages, the nicer the hair is going to get. And the more you have to trim it, especially the, the head and the front and the back end, and how nicer the hair structure is going to be. But now, for now, we can only take this off, and then it have to go in. So the new coat is coming through. So I've done sides, now I'm going to do the, his ears. Come on. I use a really fine one for that because the ears are really um, thin. And you, uh, if you use uh, fine teeth, you can't, you, it's difficult to, if you, you don't want to catch the end of the ears. I always uh, hold the ear over my hand. So I stretch it up a bit again and I slowly do it. I leave this for a bit till I finished because they, they usually shake the head if you pull everything out of the head, out, out of the ears. Out of the ears I leave that uh, last because sometimes dogs shake with it and uh, it makes it more difficult I think. I do that as last always. Even with the, in the pet 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 uh, Trimming, I always do that as last. Now I do the other ear. Hold my ear over my thumb. Stretch it up a bit. And I start slowly pulling the direction the hair is growing. I use a fine trimming, trimming knife for this because with, with the coarse trimming knife you easily catch the, the edges of the ear. I use the W5 for this. I have to do this not too fast because it's very, uh, they're very thin ears. And if you go too fast, it's as it's uh, very delicate. Also the inside I do. 
Now we've made like a band over his head from around to here. If you do this first, you can't go wrong. You know, you leave this on here, now you can play with the with this four face. Why fox turkey? It should have a long lean head. The longer the better. You should see it as a brick. Like you know, where you build a house with. And you push the brick like this. So you make the length comes from here. It should have it like this, but it should have a level face, a straight face. I comb this so usually back, backwards. And brush this or comb this forward. Now I start with this bit, and you see the the end of this, the edge of the eye, and here it is his mouth, and you have to make a visible line from here to there. But don't make it too short. For first, you start blending and blending and blending, easily blending, slowly. Make the eyebrows slowly. I can see already this is going to be his eyebrow. You do the same on the other side. You take a piece out of here, but you don't want to dish it out here. Eh? That you don't like. You don't want to like this, but you want to have a, a straight little line. Like you need to have a, see where the eyebrows are coming. You can already see my eyebrows are coming here and here. Now you're usually going to stand in front of him, brush it again with your pin pad or your comb, and put a bit of chalk in it. You're going to like where everything is sticking out on the side, you take off. So you want to have a straight line this way. Sometimes I use my uh, my fingers and sometimes I use a trimming knife. I always use not a not a coarse one, not a finer one. You can already see it's getting there, it's like a straight line from here to there. Now the other side. But it's the same as the legs, how more you trim on it, how nicer it's going to be. You can see when his new coat is coming through, you can see it's going to be nicer and nicer, especially on top of his, on top of his head. To pull a bit out of his whiskers, a little bit. You keep brushing and brushing and combing and combing. Don't worry if it's not going to be perfect the first time. It, you know how more you trim on it, how better it's going to be. If his eyebrows are uh, the hair is dead, you better take it quite short. Because long, long hair 
And this hair, you can't do anything with it. Now I take this out of here. You can use a bit of ear powder to do it. Is it open? A bit of this. And I take it out because a lot of dogs, especially if you've got pet dogs in your grooming shop, they, they tend to shake with their head, head if you trim it out and if they start shaking, then sometimes they don't stop. And uh, I don't think it will shake, but a lot of pet dogs do. Make sure you get most of the hairs out. A dog cleans his ears by shake, shaking uh, his ears. And if there's hair in it, the, the dirt won't come out, can't come out. The only thing I want to do is make the underline a bit sharper. So I trim this a bit. And after I finish trimming it, I take the filling scissors and only a little bit I do with the filling scissors. And just a little bit here. Not a lot, only to finish it off. You trim it out the most as you can and just finish it off. With the finish. Only a little bit, not a lot. Now we've done stage one, trimming out, trimming him out from a full coat. And now we have to, if we start to want to show him, or just for a pet, we have to keep working on him till his new coat comes through. Because now it's just his undercoat, and you can see about uh, in a few weeks, uh, about a month, you can see his new coat coming through, and you can feel it. His new coat coming through when you brush him backwards, you can feel his new coat coming through. But now he's finished for stage one, and then we have to keep working on him for uh, if he wants to go to the show. Yeah, okay. This was Dini. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.